Hi, this is Tim. In this video, we're going to continue building out our linear motion program, adding an automatic operation to it. Just to recap what we've done so far, in our introduction video, we added a modified version of our wiring enough to get started exercise where we wired the buttons, switches, and lights to our Allen Bradley Compact Logics PLC. Then we integrated the Allen Bradley Compact Logics PLC and the Yamaha TS-SH servo drive using their add-on instruction, which is really simple to use. In fact, there are no hardwire connections between our PLC and our servo controller. It is all going over ethernet. After that, we created a handoff auto switch. And so if we're in the hand position, then we can use switch three and we can just jog it around. And if we switch it back to auto, you're gonna see it goes back to our zero position right now. And then we added our analog sensor. Now this is actually unnecessary, but it did give us a little bit of feedback and you'll notice the green light occasionally does go out during motion. And if we go to hand and I start jogging, you'll see it goes out. And then when I stop, it catches up. And that's because this sensor here, there is some filtering on, so it doesn't immediately check, but it is giving us an external position feedback. We did a little housekeeping in the last video because we had a few bits out there straggling that were going to affect us on power up. So in this video, I think we're ready to do an auto operation with this. And so what I think we're going to do is we're going to make it where it'll start in the zero position. And then it's going to run out, we'll say to 100 millimeters at a very slow speed. And then... At a rapid speed, it'll go on out to 300, and maybe there'll be a pause, and then it is gonna go back at a rapid speed to zero and be ready to do it again. And let's use the green button to start the process. Just to recap our Studio 5000 program, here is the add-on instruction that we're using to control our servo motor. And this really is all it is to it, is over here on the ethernet, we have created our generic Ethernet module of the linear actuator, and we dropped this one AOI in from Yamaha, and we're ready to go. And really, I, I mean, this is this is easier to configure than a kinetic servo, which is native to Allen Bradley. I can't just tell you how easy Yamaha has made this. And then, yeah, we've done some logic to give us some flags, some lights, and make our manual work. And now we're ready to make our auto work. And I think I want to create a new routine for this. So let's right click our main program, add new routine, and we're going to create a ladder diagram. And we're just going to call this our sequence. And we'll open that up. And we're going to use a really basic sequencing method of equals and moves. And we have a whole series on different ways you can sequence. So I'm not going to go real deep into it, but we're going to start with a compare statement and we're going to use the equals and we're going to compare our sequence number and we'll need to create that. So right click new and that'll be a double integer. And then in this case, we want our sequence number to be zero. And we're going to be waiting on our green button before we start our sequence. So let's go to our favorites tab, examine on, and let's look for local colon one colon I dot data dot zero. That is button one, which is our green button. And when we see it, we're going to do a move logical and we are going to move our source, which is going to be 10, to our destination, which is going to be our sequence number. And this is a really common sequence that I use. And then, all right, once we hit our green button, then we are going to want to slowly move, or no, first we want to be at zero. So once we hit our green button, we're going to make sure we're at position zero. So we're going to bring a branch down around this move instruction right here. And we're going to bring another move down. And we're going to move our position. What is our commanded position? It is move ABS POS. Also, we're going to need the speed. So it's move ABS speed. These are the two we're going to manipulate throughout this. So I'm going to move a position of zero 
to move ABS POS, which is our absolute position. Right click, let's add a branch level. And we are going to bring down another move. And this is going to be 100 for 100%. And that's going to be to our move ABS speed. So now, if we're in sequence zero and we hit the green button, we're going to move to our zero position. We should be able to copy and paste this and get pretty far. So right click, copy, right click, paste. And now, one, we're going to be at position 10 because that's what we moved here. Now, why did we move 10 instead of 1? Well, because chances are I forgot something. So this gives me a lot of flexibility to add things later. And so in this case, they were not going to have the green button. We're going to want to know that our position is 0. So we're going to go over here and we're going to be looking at this actual position to be 0. We also probably need to look at this position complete bit to make sure that we're done moving. So we're going to bring down a compare, and we're going to be looking for equal, and this will be linear AOI, which is the name that we gave to that AOI tag, dot actual position. And so in this case, we want it to be zero. And then we're going to change this to linear AOI dot, I don't remember what that was, what was it? Position complete. So linear AOI dot position complete. Okay, so that'll make it, we hit the green button. It's going to tell it to go to position zero at 100%. And then we're going to be waiting for it to be to zero, 100%. And here's where I said we'd have a slow move. So when well, we're going to go 100 millimeters. So that'll be our absolute position. And then we're going to make it a 2% speed. So then our next one, we were supposed to be a pause while we did a process. Now we don't really have a process to do, but we're going to call it our yellow light process. We're going to turn the yellow light on for, we're going to say one second. Oh, also we need to know we're in auto mode. I just realized that. So let's see, back here, auto mode, switch, so servo in auto. There you go, that was input number nine. We're going to go over here, and each one of these we're going to need on our favorites tab, Examine on or go look for a one local colon one colon I dot data dot nine. That is going to be that we're in auto. So we'll right click, copy that, right click here, paste. And okay, we should be able to copy and paste this wrong now to really almost have our next step done. So right click, copy, right click, paste. Okay, in this case, now I wasn't quite done. I jumped ahead a little bit. So this moved a source of 10. This is looking for a 10. This is going to move a 20. Forgot that part. So we're going to want to be at position number 100 now. And in that case, we're just going to increment by 10 now. So this is going to be 30. So once we're in that position, we're supposed to do that yellow process. So... We're going to need another, actually, this is going to be a branch around this whole thing, and it'll make sense in a second. We're going to put a branch around this, and then we're going to put a timer in here. So T-O-N, and this will be our process yellow. How's that sound? So we'll right-click it, new process yellow, and it will be a timer, and it's going to be a one-second process. Okay, now, when this is done, we want to do all this. Now, we got to go turn our yellow light on. We'll get it in a second. We want to bring down our favorites tab and examine on. Go look for our one. And now we want this process yellow dot DN. And once that timer is done, we're going to move on to the 300 millimeter position, which is the far left side of the actuator. We're gonna, that's going to be a fast move. We're going to run at one. So now we need to go and make our yellow light work. So really, yeah, we want to use these instructions. We want to be in auto, sequence number 20, and we want to be at that 100 millimeter position and this be complete. That's exactly when we want the yellow light to be on. Now I could throw the yellow light right here, but I'm not going to. I'm going to copy these instructions, mainly because we already have our outputs over here. 
and they probably should be in another separate routine, but you know, we've kind of kind of evolved this program this way. So I'm going to put the yellow light right between the green and blue since this is output one. So I'm going to drag a rung down and I'm going to right click paste. And then we're going to bring down an output energize of local colon one colon o dot data dot one, which is our yellow light. So I'll make our yellow light be on for that one second pause. And then, okay. You know, honestly, it, let's highlight rung one, which is a rung above it. That's gonna be a little easier on us. Let's paste it down here. So now we're looking for our sequence number to be 30 and our position to be 300. And we're looking for our position to complete again. And in that case, we are gonna move 40 to our sequence number. And we're gonna be done for process. So we're gonna run, do, wait, do we? Well, yeah, we probably wanna go back to zero because already right now it's going to be here it's going to move to 100 millimeters really slow yellow light's going to come on for one second to represent some process it's going to run really fast to 300 which could be like ejecting a part or something and then we want to bring it back and be ready for the next part so i do want to go ahead and move a position of zero at 100 percent speed to our actuator when we're in sequence number 30. And then let's copy and paste this one more time. So copy, paste, because we wanna make this happen again. So now we wanna be in sequence number 40 and we want our position to be zero. Our position to be complete. And at that point, we actually wanna move zero to our sequence number and that'll do it. Okay, does that cover everything? I think that does. Oh, you know something? That it may not cover is what happens when we switch it on an auto? What should happen? And there's a couple of ways we could do this. So let's leave this like it is and let's put this in there. Let's see if it actually works. So you should just be able to hit your finalize and okay. Oh, no, oh, I made a mistake. I forgot to put a JSR for our sequence program. So in our main routine, remember up top earlier, I put a JSR for the scaling. So right below it, I'm going to bring a rung down and you know, I could go find the program control tab and just find the JSR or right here, I can type JSR enter. And that'll give me the routine and that'll give it to me at supper. I need to select the routine. So I'm going to do the sequence one this time and we'll finalize that. If we go over here, okay, right now, this is looking for us to be in auto mode. So if we have done everything right, when I switch switch four to auto, Let's just start moving. Oh, I hate it when it happened. Oh man. Well, we have a learning opportunity. Let's go find it. Okay, so we do see switch fours in the right position. And, oh yeah, we're waiting on button one. Cause yeah, we had to have the green button to start our process. So, so I should be able to hit the green button. And okay, it is starting to slowly move. And then it should pause at 100 millimeters. And our green light. We'll okay, it all worked. I just couldn't talk fast enough. All right, well, if we've done everything right, we should be able to do it again. Yes, we're slowly moving out, representing, I don't know, some slow process. And then we get to our 100 millimeter position. Yellow light comes on for one second and bam, it moves and moves back the other way. So we can put some other pauses in there, but I think this gets you to where you can see how you could make an automatic process work and we can vary the speed while it's happening. So if this video has helped you understand how you could do some linear motion sequences, if it has, please hit that like button. I'll put a link to our linear motion control trainer down in the description, along with this whole lesson series. Till next time. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber with TW Controls. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And you two think you'll like these. When you're ready for some intense PLC training, check out our PLC lab. And if our videos have helped you out and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.